Hi everyone, welcome to ACCA Business and Technology, previously known as F1. Today I want to explain about the theorists, about the writers, what did they say. Um, so we do have different topics. So if you want to pass this paper, you need to know what the writer says. So what do they say on culture? What about the stakeholders? What about leadership, management, and supervision? We also have um, individuals, groups, and team behavior, motivating individual groups, and training, communication. So, all right, let me start with the organizational culture. What is culture? What is it? Then he said that culture, it is the way we do things around here. That's culture, right? We might be talking about beliefs, values, um, many things. So we have um, we have shame, we have envy, we have both state rights. Okay. Shame said that if you want to know the culture of a company, if you want to know the culture of an organization, you need to know three things. Shame said that you need to know shame said we have the artifacts. We have the exposed values and the basic assumptions. So he said that if you want to know the culture, the first thing, know the artifacts. What are the artifacts? If we are talking about artifacts, we are talking about things that can be easily seen, such as the way people dress. So that's easy to know the culture of the company, right? Some people at the workplace, they always wear formal. So it's not difficult to describe what they will really do. We get it. So, you can end up knowing the culture by looking at the dressing. She also talked about the exposed values. You, these are now the goals of an organization, the company slogans. So, if you, if you know the goals, you can end up knowing the culture of the company, their beliefs, their values. You get it. So, and also say that they are basic assumptions. Basic assumptions, it's not like the company say that we do this here, we don't do this here, we do this here, we don't do this, do these things here. So the issue is that some of the things, you might do some of the things not knowing that it's a culture. Like, you are not, you are not doing this, these things knowingly that it's, it's, it's a culture. This, uh, our company wants us to do these things. Some of the things we'll be using assumptions. And, and we end up knowing that, why do we really do, this, do it? It's a culture. All right. Then we have Henry. Henry said that if you want to know the culture of the company, you need to know four things. So, he described the culture, there are four types. Right? Because he said that um, leaders, first leaders, they do influence the culture. The first leaders, they do influence the culture of an organization. So even the, so the followers, they, can, they will try to follow what their first leaders did when they were running the organization. All right. Then he said that we have the power culture, we have the role culture, we have the task culture, and we have the person culture. So we have the power culture. You can look at the power. Who has power? Is it the boss only? Or maybe we are also delegating other employees? It now depends on the size of the organization. You want to know the culture of the company. You can look at the power culture. Number two, you can look at the role culture. What do you do at your work? Okay, okay, okay. So you end up knowing the culture by knowing the role. Because if I'm talking about the role, these are things that you do every day. Role culture, even the task. So uh, some of the organizations, they can be given task. Some of the organizations, they say, no, 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 we do not work uh, in groups. We require people to work individually. It's their culture. You get it. I mean, when they do, when they perform tasks, when they do the task, they, you end up knowing the culture. Number four, we have the person culture. So, 
some organization they can even attend, they can even listen to your personal problems. It do depends with the size of the organization. So, um, but the probability that um, they will listen the, uh, to your personal problems, if a company is large, the probability that they will follow all, all the staff is very low. So usually it's, it depends with the size of the organization, right? Then, both states say that you need to know these four types. But both states didn't make their life easy because each type he explains, he said that it is high, it might be high, it might be low, it might be high, it might be low. Number one, he said that there is uncertainty avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance. What is it? Uncertainty avoidance. So if you are an employee, you want to avoid to do something that you are uncertain about. Do you get it? Do you follow? So uncertainty avoidance, you want to avoid being uncertain. Alright? Okay. So both states say that uncertainty avoidance, there's, there, there's high uncertainty avoidance, there is low uncertainty avoidance. So if you want to avoid uncertainty, if you want to avoid doing things you are uncertain about, if the uncertainty avoidance is high, that means you are even afraid to take risks. So you are not willing to do things uh, outside um, the control, uh, outside the supervision of your manager. So the issue is, uh, if you have high uncertainty avoidance, that means you want guidance. You want proper guidance. You, you want to follow things that you are told to do, right? So, in other words, you are risk averse. You get it. But if the uncertainty avoidance uh, is very low, if the uncertainty avoidance is very low, that means if your level of avoiding doing uncertain things, if it is very low, that means you are willing to take risks. So you can even try new things, try to implement new things, try to do something new. You are not even afraid of failing because you believe that even if I fail, a experience comes from art. So you believe that you, you get the experience. So that's a certain avoidance. Number two, both to say that there is uh, the power distance. The power distance, there is high power distance, there is low power distance. If we say the power distance, it, the power distance is high. So that means we are saying that uh, the, the managers, the top managers, if the, if we say the power distance is high, they are they, they retain the power. You get it. So they are not willing to delegate. They are not willing to delegate. But if the power distance is low, so that means they don't have that. Uh, they don't have too much power, so they are even delegating the power to other what, to other managers. Number three, we have individualism. Individualism can be high, it can be low. If you want to know the culture of the organization, you can just look at the individualism. Is it high? Is it low? If we say the individualism is high, if there is high individualism, that means the employees are willing to work individually. Why would they want to work as individuals? Most, uh, it is likely that they will be skilled. It is likely that they are good at what they will be doing. So they, they don't need any help. So there is high individualism. But the individualism, if it is low now, so that means if the individualism is low, they are not willing to work individually, they want to work as a group, they want to work as a team. So we call it collectivism, you get it. So that's it, you end up knowing the culture. Do they work in groups? Do they work individually? And I can even apply signature. We say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, right? You know that you learn from a primary school learning that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. But when I talk about signage, I say 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Why, why that? Because 2 plus 2 it will be equal to 5 when people work in groups. So it is believed that if people work as a team, they will be able to achieve more than if they work individually. You get it right. Then number four, we have um, we have femininity and masculinity. So the word femininity it was derived from female. Masculinity was derived from male. You get it. So if you want to know the culture, what do 
uh, if you're talking about uh, men in the workplace, what do they really want? Men, they do want the job title. Yes, they want power, they want power, they want respect. But when you talk about like, like um, women from uh, femininity, they are concerned with uh, work life balance, all they want is the social life, work life balance, good salaries, etc. So that's what both is saying. So that's the what? That's the organizational culture, right? Then we have, we do have um, stakeholders. We do have stakeholders. Yes, yeah, stakeholders. What what is a stakeholder? If I say a stakeholder, a stakeholder. If you if you can influence, if you can affect or be affected by the company's activities, that means you are a stakeholder. We do have internal stakeholders, those that work within the company, which is the employees, managers, and the directors. We have the connected stakeholders. Who are the connected stakeholders? The connected stakeholders are the kind of stakeholders that uh, if they are not there, the business won't operate, the company won't, won't operate. So the connected, they do not work within the company, but they are connected such as the shareholders. Shareholders is, is not from, is, doesn't uh, work within the organization, but the shareholder is an investor, the one who is invested. So that means if they don't invest the money, the company cannot operate. Shareholders are connected, customers is a connected stakeholder, supplies is a connected stakeholder. Yes, so you need to sell your products to the customers, so they are connected. So you need to purchase materials from the suppliers, they are connected. So what about if you need finance? You can get it from the banks, so they are connected right. So we do have different kind of connected stakeholders. We also have the external stakeholders. External stakeholders, they don't have any interest in your company, you get it. They don't have any interest. So, but they just want you to follow the rules and regulations, such as the government, tax authorities, the community, the pressure groups, right? That's it. Then now, they, uh, it, it is difficult to please all stakeholders. It is difficult to please all stakeholders. They are always complex. For example, let me give you an example that like, let's say an employee versus a manager. The manager would want bonus. But the company say we don't have that money to give you bonuses. Maybe if we cut the salaries of the employees, we will be able to give the bonuses to the directors. So I think that it will please the directors, but the employees will complain. So you can't please all stakeholders. You get it. So who will you please first? Who will you please first? So the first thing that you need to know is who is the key player? Who is the key player? So it now depends. So most people they think that shareholder is always a key player when answering exam. It depends with the scenario, depends with the question. Sometimes a shareholder might not be a key player. For example, imagine a shareholder who owns 1% in a certain company. So that means that kind of shareholder owns 1%. One, one he doesn't have power. He doesn't have power. He's not a key stakeholder. He's not a key player. For example, there is a, a shareholder who owns 10%. There is another shareholder who owns 20 Another shareholder owns 30 Another one owns what? 70, 80, 90, another one owns 40. So, the one who owns 10%, you cannot call him a, a, a key player. He doesn't have power. Because even if you, if he, he removes he, his 10% investment, the company can still operate, continue to operate. You get it right. So, Medlo gave us uh, this grid. There is this grid. So let me say low here, low, high, high. Now this is the level of um, let me say the level of interest. What about here the level of power? The level of power, right? So if it is low, low, minimum what? 
effort. Someone who has low interest in your company and also you have, you have low power, doesn't have power. So even if that kind of stakeholder complain, we are not willing to put minimal, minimal effort, right? What about a stakeholder who has high interest but with low power? In terms of power, it doesn't have power, but in terms of interest, the interest is high. So what can we do to that stakeholder? The stakeholder, the stakeholder is interested. So keep him what? Informed. Yes, you need to object him because he's interested. But, so let me give an example. Sometimes normally we would say a, a stakeholder who has high interest in your company but doesn't have power. For example, it might be a customer. Because why is interested, maybe want to buy your products, but doesn't need power over a company. What about a stakeholder who has low interests but high power? He has high power but low interest. What do you do to that kind of stakeholder? Keep him smart, keep satisfied. If someone has power, you have to make sure you satisfy that person, that, that company, that organization. So for example, normally the government has power because if you don't satisfy them, for example, you are operating as a company, you know that if the company must pay tax. If you are not paying tax, that means they would require you to, to close your business. So they do have power. What about the kind of stakeholder the reason why I, I, I gave an example that the government has high power but low interest. They are not interested in your company, but they just want you to follow rules and regulations. But what about the kind of stakeholder where you have high power and high interests? What do you do? You keep what if you, you say is a key player. That's the most important stakeholder. Normally, sometimes you know, when a shareholder, if the shareholder is invested a greater percentage and obviously being a shareholder is interested so you're a key player but not you need to be careful when you are answering questions on the main or greater because i can it can be vice versa i can say power here interest here engage so make sure you understand the concept don't just claim Make sure you understand the concept. And it do depends on the scenario. For us to say this is a key player. Sometimes a customer can be a key player. E.g., let me give an example. E.g., a customer who purchases uh, let's say 70% of your products. 70% of your sales. You are making 70% of your sales to customer A. 70% of sales goes to customer A. That means if this customer says that I'm no longer interested in buying products from your company, that means profits will be expected to deteriorate. So that means this customer is a key player because being a customer, obviously, you're interested. But purchasing 70% may be a key player. You get it. So it is about understanding the concept. Alright? So yes, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it on stakeholders. Again, let's normalize the abnormal. We have number three, leadership management and supervision. Leadership. Being a leader. You are a leader. What do you do? If we say that to a leader, there's a difference between a manager and a leader. A leader is someone who influences. Alright. Leadership. Leadership. For example, I can ask you a question that, I can pose a question that, what kind of leadership style will you use? Will you use uh, the autocratic? Will you use uh, the democratic 
or the license free range. If you say you are using the autocratic, autocratic leadership style. Autocratic means you have the old authority, so it's also called authoritarian. So you have the authority where you make your decisions yourself. You just tell employees what you tell employees what they should do. It's a one-way communication. Just tell them do this, and they must follow without asking questions. We also have democratic, where you also need to see you make decisions, you wait for feedback. Then we have uh, the license free lane, we say, we say that you can allow even employees to make the decisions on their own. But now that depends with the types, the, the type of employees you are dealing with. Imagine you are dealing with employees who, do, who doesn't even like work. You cannot use license free brain saying that make the decisions on your own. They will ruin everything. They won't achieve the goals. They won't achieve the targets. So what will you do? It, that's why McGregor. McGregor said, if you are dealing with employees, check whether are they key or yet? Are they key or why? All right. If the employees are theory X, if an employee is in theory X, that kind of employee, theory X, they dislike the work. They dislike the job. They are not willing even to take responsibility. So, what can I do? Which style will I use? Obviously, I'll use autocratic leadership style, one-way communication. I'll just tell them what they should do. One-way communication. Because they don't like work. But if you are dealing with theory one, your style, you have to change your style. Because they, the, those kind of employees, they are willing to take even responsibility. So if you use democratic even or license free then yes, they will be motivated you can allow them to make decisions on their own because you believe that whatever they will be doing is for the greater good, is for the greater good. Right. That's what Magrida says. Leadership management and supervision. We have... Um, so on leadership now, some might have power. At the workplace, people, they do have different power. French and French and Raven. French and Raven talked about the sources of power. Talked about the sources of power. People they do have different power. Some might have the reward power. What's the reward power? The ability to, to reward someone. You can tell employees that you need to perform this task and if you achieve them, we will reward you, we will increase your salaries. That's that means you have reward power. If you are able to, to reward employees, you have the reward power. We also have coercive power. Coercive power, this is the power to punish people who have failed to complete their job. You can punish. Imagine like um, a school. Let's say a school, someone is a prefect. Being a prefect simply means that you have a certain power that other students don't have. You get it. As a prefect, maybe if people are uh, making noise in class during sessions, the prefect can punish them. That means that person has coercive power. At the workplace, if you're a manager who can punish employees who didn't complete their job, maybe say, we knock off at four, but you, you are going to knock off at six. Make sure so that I want to make sure that you don't leave here without completing that task. So I assume that that person has cohesive power. So there is a lot of power, there is cohesive power, there is a legitimate power. The legitimate power comes because of the position that you have. We also have um, we also have uh, the negative power. Negative power, negative power. Do you know? Let me give you an example. They say, 
employees are not receiving their salaries. And someone who just, who just persuades other employees saying that, guys, you can't com continue to work here. Uh, you can't continue. But if you go for a strike. And if people would follow what he's saying, that means that person has a negative power. All right. We also have a uh, black and mortar. Black and Morton talked about the managerial greed. They talked about the managerial greed. Here they said there is the level, uh, this is the, uh, the concern, the concern for people. Concern for people. Here, this is concern for production. Concern for people and the concern for production. So here, let me say, we have zero here. Uh, let, what did I say? One here, nine here. One here, nine here. Okay? Maybe five here, maybe five here. Right. In uh, mathematics, we say we have coordinates. You start with X and the last one will be Y. So let this be my x, let this be my y. All right. Black and Morton say that if you are a manager, so this is, I think that this is at one, this is low, at nine, this is high. At one, this is low, at nine, this is high. They say that if you are a manager, we have low consent for production and low consent for people. That means you are at one one, and they call it they, they call it management what? It's management impoverished. It's management impoverished. You have no consent for production. So what are you doing? You are a manager doing nothing. Even you don't have concern for people. Management is provided. But what about if you are a manager who will be at what? X. You start with X here. One. Then you have nine. If you are a manager who is at 1.9, it simply means that in terms of the consent for people, it's high. But the consent for production is low. If you have high consent for people and low consent for production, is that a good thing? I don't think so because you don't have consent for production. You only have consent for people. Yes, in terms of consent for people is a good thing. But in terms of consent for production, it's not a good thing. So what are you doing at work? You are, you, you are only concerned with, for example, people's problems, make sure whether they are receiving their salaries, but they are not doing anything. So they are just receiving salaries, bonuses, listening to their complaints. So you are just playing at work. So it's more like a club. It's called country club. Country club. Country club, we are playing country club. What about 9.1 here? High consent for production. So you be a manager who, who say, guys, make sure you complete all the tasks. You have consent for production. But no consent for people. It's not balanced. You want to make sure that employees have completed their work. But you have no you have no consent for people. So it's not a good thing to just make sure employees are finishing the task, are achieving the goals, the objectives, the targets, but you are not paying them salaries. So they will have low motivation. It's not a good thing. Even yes, they can, for example, they can produce small outputs, but sometimes it might not meet the required standard because they are not motivated, because they are not happy. So, the fact that you have consent for production is called tasking. 
You get it. So what we need, imagine you have high concern for production, high concern for people. You will be at 9.9. .9. You'll be working as a team. Now you have a team. Because there is a difference between a team and a group. All right. But what we expect, what we need, if you are able to balance the two, the consent for production, the consent for people, that will be great. And you call it middle of the roads. Middle of the roads. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Then we have Ashley's management style. Ashley's management style says that. It now depends on the employees you are dealing with. Some of the employees you just want. Some of the employees we just tell them what to do. You tell them. If I say you're using tell, tell, you are not expecting a feedback. So it's a one-way communication. So I've explained what McGregor said. Uh, you can use tell to kind of employees who don't like work, which is the pure X. Then Another approach that you can use is sell. Imagine someone is selling a product. What can he do? He can persuade you, he can convince you that the product is good. The product is of good quality. You get it. So sell, you are trying to persuade. So tell is, sell is different with tell in the sense that um, you are not forcing employees to do it, but you are convincing them. For example, guys, what if we perform this task? What if we achieve these goals? Can't you see that the company will benefit as well? And we will also be able to increase your salaries. You are persuading them. You are making them like to do the work. You are making them love the job. You get it. We also have consults. This is where you don't just make a decision, but you consult the employees. Guys, this is our plan. What do you think? So you expect a feedback. That's consult. But you have the final say though. Then the last one is join. 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 It's like you are removing. You are removing off your jacket. And we say that we are all equal. Let's make the decision together. Easy. Right. There's also uh, the contingent theories. We also have the contingent theories. We also have um, Fiddler. Fiddler said something. Benny said something. Many people there. Benny said that um, leaders are different. 